Jai Hind and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achint. A much-awaited episode that we had discussed last time, where we'll talk about the geopolitics of oil and, of course, the oil wars. Combining as a discussion, where we will talk about the grand strategy of the United States of America, or Uncle Sam, as I'd like to call him, to discuss this big game. I have with me left uh, Major General Rajiv Narayanan, sir. Thank you so much. I think this is a topic very close to your heart, if I may. In the sense that people always talk of the China dream. We talk of what uh, Pax Britannica did. We talk talk of what Pax Roma did. But nobody talks of the existing superpower. Of what his vision is. If we always talk of Thucydides' trap. that it is going to happen but we never look at what is the strategy of the super power and how is he likely to counter a rising power why <laughs> i find no literature available no papers being written of what exactly is the american dream and how is he planning to do it so i have tried in my understanding through my readings to enmesh all this the first part of course we did last week on the geopolitics of oil and gas so i want to enmesh that into this to tell what exactly is the vision of the americans so i have a slide i will put it up sir yeah there we go yes the uncle sam's grand strategy for global dominance okay this has been so what are the two major strategies that they have been working on the vision and grand strategy so it is a full spectrum global dominance in the coming centuries pax americana that is the us dream i don't buy into any of what the western us authors say that pax americana is not there i'm sorry it is there and the war in ukraine indicates towards that based on this that is when they evolve their near to medium term strategies to control various aspects of global governance and development like economy finance technology now you can add the multi domain spectrum and ever since the fall of the soviet union use of force has become one of their leading factors but prior to that it was in around uh, if i remember correctly 73 was when they set up the office of net assessment hmm andrew marshall this was his task in doing a proper net assessment periodic net assessment to evolve and inform the state and the department of defense and the president what should be their near to medium term strategies globally region by region it is based on this the uh, from then on that their national security strategy and the national defense strategy that see so today hence there is the need for him to control energy because without energy you will not have industrial development financial instruments because without finance you can't grow your arms industry science and technology the information dominance battle of narratives control of data space now information dominance also includes cyber everything either you will control or you will disrupt here i have used kinetically first and non or non kinetically afterwards he yeah, does because ever been. since the fall of the soviet union the kinetic mean has been at the forefront hmm. now let us step back do people may say ki abhi ye relevant nahi hai no it is very relevant this is mckinder's heartland theory 
heartland theory so the pivot area is also known as heartland but it dates to 1904 but that is why the outlying islands were called lands of outer crescent or insular crescent because in those days because globalization was not there they were insulated from the happenings on the world island but today it is not so but the heartland that whoever controls this because that was the area which was deemed even then to have the maximum natural resources yes so when you look at the world island while europe and asia you may divide it into two separate landmass but they are interlinked eurasia is one huge landmass connected to africa but since he is the outlying island he has to have a strategy to reach this area and that is where you have the sea power hmm the sea power theory of alfred thayer mahan that means control the oceans to control the pivot area in the world island so he written two books one in 1890 and another in 1892 and he clearly states naval power ocean commerce ocean industry and large population where is the large population <laughs> not in the islands it is in the world island pivot so that is how so these are the two things and that is why today he controls the atlantic and the pacific the two major oceans to need uses the indian ocean essentially as a victualling spot digo garcia is for victualling but the control he wants to keep is in the pacific and the Indi- uh, the atlantic, atlantic oceans and that is how his bases and lily pads close to about 800 are there all over the world island and the immediate uh, crescent which is there the islands which are closer by and of course he also has it in the outer crescent but bulk are located here unless he controls the seas he cannot control the uh, world island and now do you see why he has 11 to 12 aircraft carriers 800 more he needs them he needs them to be able to implement what he is wanting to do okay so what is that so it starts with i will go cold war but pax americana uh, precedes cold war also <clears throat> it's world peace but there are certain issues that we need to remember on pax americana Pax Americana comes with after the success in the civil war peace in the american continent that is the background iss to the monroe doctrine control the north and south america you don't interfere here i don't interfere so he started looking at the pacific ocean as his backyard now what happened after world war 1 the richest nation at the end of the world war 1 was usa they were not part of the league of nations correct so kindleberger who was one of the economists has spoken of who was one of the economists who brought out and that marshall plan mm. he was in the 40s and 50s he was one of the leading economists of usa he has spoken of a economic trap which is called the kindleberger trap and he has assessed the recession which took place he says the recession took place as per his assessment and his analysis because the world's richest power was not there to provide the global commons to the world the other nations that were there european nations were not strong enough they had been devastated by the war they mm-hmm. were not economically strong enough so to people around they could not 
and that is the background to how the recession started the that great depression is, right the deep depression which took place the great depression 20s 30s yeah mm -hmm. that was a global recession yes sir yes sir. this is a global recession took place the leading power also faced this problem because the place where he needed to sell they didn't have the money and True. he was not investing into any financial institutions hmm. to sort it out and that he says is what enabled us post world war 2 to create all these financial institutions and help in establishing the pax americana because he controlled the financial institutions the bretton woods and the so global institution happen. which came there with the financial institutions okay now why was this because the existing powers at that time were not ready to share space with america but they are also anglo saxon so post world war 2 they had no choice because they were totally devastated but even then the actual control of the energy in the middle east came under the us control only after the 1956 suez canal fiasco led by britain france and israel yes, us did not support them us supported egypt because egypt was going to nationalize that so from there begins the start mm -hmm. of actual global dominance of mm -hmm. the western world he didn't have as as much footprints in the soviet world the other side of the iron curtain but the western world he started dominating okay and then comes the collapse of the soviet union and that gives rise to the project for a new american century from pax americana this emerges slowly in the middle of the 90s this happened around 96 97 so the pax americana full spectrum global dominance suddenly you became unipolar became the sole superpower mm. so now you were very keen to dominate even the oil and gas pipelines of the ussr domain the heartland and if you couldn't you were disrupting and you always had the power struggle between uh, soviet union erstwhile soviet union and the us in these regions and in latin america uh, which they called small wars and the americans were very keen for this because when you have these kind of tensions going around in these areas if uh, countering each other uh, that they felt was the soft underbelly of the uh, soviet union but when they couldn't we covered under the pipeline is than how and why the various areas were targeted and you created the uh, problems but concurrent with this cuz you needed an enemy now that soviet union had gone they had named islam as the future threat to the global order and this is the region of islam the crescent so they needed also to control the middle east and latin america global energy control because the these were the areas where the ma maximum uh, oil was there their protege saudi arabia had become the head of opec opec was made in 60s early 60s 60 61 with five founding members iran iraq kuwait venezuela and saudi arabia out of which only two today are with the us saudi arabia and kuwait iraq ko to tod taad ke rakha hua hai kahan se nikalta hai kitna pata nahi Iran is axis of evil. Venezuela को भी ban कर रखा है 
of course there are about 13 to 15 countries who are also part of the opec but the best part is headquarters is located in vienna it's not located in the middle east it's not located there vanam ke kafi countries hai who are part of it it's not located there it started with being located in uh, Geneva and then shifted in 65 yeah. to Austria, Vienna. And it's an amazing thing. And that is around about the same time because the, before the project for a new American century got established, Samuel Huntington wrote his book, Clash of Civilizations. And Zbigniew Brzezinski, who was a close associate Samuel Huntington has been a close associate of Brzezinski, by the way, yeah. wrote the grand chess board and wherein he clearly talks of dominating this oil area. And when you declared Islam as the future threat, Samuel Huntington comes out with the book Clash of Civilizations. Okay, So it runs deep. And then around nine, once the project for a new American century, PNAC comes through. Ralph Peters, of Iran Contra fame, who's a Republican guy, hardcore neocon, he comes out with his paper, Redrawing the Borders of Middle East. All these are with a purpose. Okay. The essence is that either I disrupt the pipelines, they wanted to create alternate pipelines, disrupt the uh, pipelines which are emerging from the heartland, which is Russia. Russia. If you can't do it by redrawing these and redividing the control uh, based on various factions and tribes, you leave the area in an inter with an internecine feud. I can't use it, you can't use it. So there will be certain arcs of stability which, which is emerging today that they are not keen to create this kind of instability south of the Persian Gulf. Yeah. <clears throat> All instability is to the north. North. Which is quite interesting. Okay. Now, this is what, when you look at it, this is the nerve center for global energy outside of your pivot area. Yeah, Latin America, Venezuela and have. But this area, the shaded area, this is the nerve center of your uh, global energy as it is existing today, the fossil fuel. This is the change that they are going to do. And if you look at Iraq, fighting is all... The three portions are already there, the Shia, the Sunni. The Kurds don't have that much of area which is supposed to be part of Iran and Turkey. But... <coughs> and portions of Armenia, but the portion within Iraq is independent, virtually independent. It's autonomous. Now, sir, uh, the... Pardon? Sorry. Uh, no, my, can... my request would be, let's kind of go through region by region so that we can take people through the yeah, entire... Now you can see what is going on. Let's go east to west. Yes, sir. Let's, yeah. Having pulled out from Afghanistan, see what is happening in Pakistan, Afghanistan. And this is the same map that the Afghanistan defense minister has also released. Yes. Correct. He's released this map, same map. This is that uh, up above, along with Wakhan corridor, he's connected the Gilgit-Baltistan area. Ji. And in his uh, alternate governance, he has given the North, uh, North Waziristan uh, KPK includes uh, Gilgit Baltistan. And though here it is free Balochistan, but South KPK includes Balochistan. Yeah. Okay. And here, like you can see, the area that they have claimed is right up to the river Indus. 
so this is already on iraq it is already on syria the fight is already on lebanon the fight is already on it has been on since uh, 82 yeah azerbaijan armenia are fighting azerbaijan armenia are fighting so north of the persian gulf you have created this problem and like if you see between uh, the shia sunni area mein to zyada kuch hai nahi iraq ka but if you look at the iraq shia area and the kurd area they don't see eye to eye turkey now turkey is talking to syria hmm they want to meet yeah they like to meet and discuss with syria here so it is to disrupt embroil the region in self destructive internecine warfare so you are creating a shia arc starting from iran all the way up to lebanon your shia arc has come okay it is because the israelis went into lebanon to throw out the plo plo it is they the pla or or uh, palestine liberation organization plo yasser arafat ka plo they decided to go there and uh, ariel sharon was on record to have stated that we are not just we are not going to stay there and conquer that area we want to come back but they stayed there for 4 years south lebanon that is the birth of hezbollah hezbollah that is the start point and the birth of hezbollah when uh, yasser arafat okay. went and met khamenei ne wo to yasser arafat had been pulled out by then but this they started and khamenei then started giving them funding to the hezbollah and they bombed two places the U- french and the us had brought in their uh, un resolution that they had brought in the troops one building was targeted there their headquarters and the other which was targeted was the israeli headquarters israeli headquarters id uh, yeah. not exactly an id it was a vehicle filled with uh, suicide bombing with a vehicle full of bomb full of explosives so lebanon has been going on th- since then because by then the christian population the maronite had become a uh, minority mm. and the americans and the french were wanting to place a maronite led government in lebanon true and that's where it failed okay so once all these problems start their stated aim appears to have been that then we will be the people to be able to provide security so that becomes the influencer okay now the only person who they could influence here was the areas to the south as of late they have antagonized saudi arabia and uae so let's see how it goes that's why i say ye planning to vision to unhone bana ke chhod diya tha ki is tarah se karna hai world island ko dominate karna hai but i think uh, the domination Uh, western domination was acceptable till the soviet union was there post the soviet union their aggressive actions have now three decades down the line made a lot of people start losing faith and trust in them see this was the closer home which i was trying to look mention to you okay किधर गया ये खुलनीरा ओए वन सेकंड सर हां नहीं आई हैड मेड अ स्मार्ट आर्ट वेट लेट मी मेंशन शो फ्रॉम हियर बिकॉज़ दैट स्मार्ट आर्ट थिंग इज नॉट ओपन बट लेट मी जस्ट शिफ्ट बैक टू दिस टिल द टाइम यू ओपन इट फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल टू काइंड ऑफ Breathe this through because this is as somebody mentioned in the comments. A lot of people were interested because Pakistan, uh, you know, is kind of broken up. But you know, eerily speaking, when I saw this, then General Sir actually sent it to me. I saw this map, 
and I saw the map that was released. I've shared it on Telegram as well and WhatsApp as well and uh, Twitter as well. Was released by the Taliban Defense Minister. It was oh. quite. Uh, Why is it not opening? Smart art is not coming in this. Oh, probably some reason, sir. My. So why don't you send it to me? I'll have it. I'll I'll put it up. Why don't you continue? I'll 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 have it done. Yeah, I'll send it on WhatsApp. हाँ जी चलेगा सर. Okay. Let's move forward and then we can. You can just. I'll put it up. Yeah. No, so I'll just send it to you on WhatsApp. Oh, yeah, no. this is what I was talking about. Now, Balochistan is again interesting because. the protests are on this entire area is blocked for the past almost 2 months yeah now again the reason why i'm sending the reason why uh, they cannot uh, show this i'm sending it to you on email chalega sir so this but here the interesting again thing to notice is the karachi port the location of the karachi port gwadar and bandarabas and then gwadar comes to gwadar comes to baluchistan pasni also goes to baluchistan yeah 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 so, so there's the three port this thing is still there and karachi is going to be with pakistan with whatever is left of pakistan So there is, there is. I just this, sent it to you on email. I'll take it out. So, so why don't you continue? There is a smart art here which has not opened, and uh, basically it shows up the arrow. I just read it out. So the thrust is going to be in any case. What is missing here? yeah so what is missing here is full spectrum dominance that is first thing they will still want their full spectrum dominance that every aspect of governance of existence will be there so they will ensure control of financial instruments and energy at any cost though it is going to get tough i will go through the challenges they will want to have a finite edge on innovation science and technology they would need so that is why they are very open for intelligentsia and scholars coming from abroad to come to their country and they open up the place for them for the people to make sure that they get that edge isliye khota hai harvard stanford and yeah, yeah information warfare look at the manner in which the battle of narratives in ukraine has gone data control we keep talking of china is taking data how much data have they got here your whatsapp telegram internet most of it have their servers there your main servers are there google aaj ke tarikh mein aap ha ye aa gaya aaj ke tarikh mein aap facebook mein jao and you look at a few videos or open a few ads after about a week it will be the similar ads and similar videos that will start coming for you how does it come where is that ai based it's all based in the us space dominance so they must be most desperate that nasa's launches are not coming up as adequately to challenge now india as also china and biggest loss of face if you were in asian your international space station is still being maintained by the russians <laughs> academic excellence unless they maintain this academic excellence by hook by crook by whatever twisting of statistics whatever way you want to do but yes they still have their ivy league and all which are quite good because they pay their 
tenured professors quite a lot and their tenured professor has no retirement age the tenured yeah. professor is for life ओके हमारे जैसे नहीं है कि रिटायर्ड हो गए और पेंशन हो और जाओ ना यू आर देयर फॉर लाइफ ओके दैट इज हाउ यू मैनेज द इंटेलिजेंसिया दैट्स द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑपरेशंस यस एंड यू मैनेज द इंटेलिजेंसिया एंड द स्कॉलर्स थ्रू दिस एंड ऑफ कोर्स पेड मीडिया व्हाट आई हैव नॉट कवर्ड हियर आर द एनजीओस यू ऑलवेज टॉक ऑफ 800 बेसिस एंड लिली पैड्स ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड has anybody tried to assess the footprint of the ngos all ngos need not be everybody in the ngo need not be an agent but they will be an agent in most of the ngos key ngos will always be there i'll give you a small example i was in tajikistan we were helping the tajiks renovate one of the bases near दुशानबे इट्स कॉल्ड आईनी इट्स नियर दी ओल्ड सिल्क रोड घीसर घीसर करके जगह है उसके बगल में है आईनी दैट यूज टू बी ड्यूरिंग द अफगान वॉर दैट यूज टू बी द बेस रिपेयर डिपो फॉर रोटरी ऑल रोटरिंग एसेट्स ऑफ द सोवियत यूनियन मैसिव एयरफील्ड एवरीबडी वॉज वेरी कीन एंड यूज टू बी आफ्टर माई ब्लड ऑल द डी एज क्या हो रहा है वहां पे? आई नेवर यूज टू टेल दे लुक एट इट द सिंपल थिंग देव सिक्स सेवन विलेजेस अराउंड सो द रश अमेरिकन डिड अ डील विद द ताजिक्स दैट दे वुड रेनोवेट द वॉटर सप्लाई सिस्टम अराउंड द ऑफ दो एट विलेजेस Amongst others, also they took, but the main area I'll focus is those seven, eight villages which are around that Aini base. Why? देखने में इनाकोस लगता है. Hmm. If I place people in the base, where do I get my water from? From one of these water supply lines? Yeah. the quantum of water going in will tell you how many people are located there there is a standard thumb rule of how much water you keep the company which the americans gave as part of us aid for these eight villages one of the co-founders was an ex cia agent <laughs> Okay, I went into the net. The ambassador won't agree at that time, so I gave him that. One of the workers, the boot on ground. See, the Americans used to have their uh, K one three fives coming for air refueling and all into Dushanbe. That was the basic deal. Their air tankers used to come refuel for air to air refueling. So the assistant DA, the DA used to be a major. the assistant da was this uh, chief warrant officer from the air force who is the air to air refueler qualified this chap had retired and we had a farewell party and after 6 months i saw him there again and the game was up he was working with the ngo so i laughed on his face and i said you don't what the shit do you know about water pipeline <laughs> you know only about air to air refueling this is how their ngos and all these aid workers work okay so it's no surprise so we need to be prepared for the manner in in which us evolves evolves its strategy especially in the region and for us because we are going for strategic autonomy we are not climbed on that bad ladder because in this whole game plan of disrupting like i had mentioned earlier the two stable flanks that they are looking at to the left was the nato and eu that is under pressure at moment let's see what happens to the right to the east is india 
which has further evolved as the quad because china a rising or a declining china whichever we use is a threat in the region so you have the quad on one side of which india is the major component because others will look after western pacific it is india that has to look after the indian ocean indian ocean but the problem here is like i have put here what is your plan b you have a vision you have chartered a strategy what are your contingency plans or plan b agar plan nahi chalta hai to wo to ladai pe aa jata hai next dikhana yeah so what are the current challenges there are five i have given first china rising some say it's declining i would say it has plateaued it may decline further but whichever way it is it is a threat in the region hmm the second india is rising but you are looking at strategic autonomy yeah you're not you're wanting not to be a lackey pardon you're not wanting to be a lackey yeah we are not an ally we will look after our interests because whatever you are doing that way i must grant the decision makers that they are very clear that whatever the us is going to do in the region will be only for its for its vision for whatever he wants to do to ensure his continued global dominance true so in that i will side with you when it suits me i will not side with you when it doesn't suit next is ukraine war russia is not failing the uh, biggest ukraine part of the plan cannot, ukraine cannot win the war without nato and nato is faltering because the region is going under deep depression mm which is that fifth point which i had given loss of faith by leading europe economies france and germany they are the leading economies of europe and if they start losing faith and trust in you then there is an issue and now the global south is not trusting you the manner in which you handled the vaccines and now what is happening and they are facing problems and you are forcing them to take sides yeah next karna yeah so now we look at crystal glazing left flank nato is in a flux eu is cracking how long they can sustain themselves i don't know but one advantage which has happened is with finland throwing the lot with nato it compounds uh, and weakens china's arctic policy because finland had earlier signed on on part of with with china for their arctic uh, yeah yeah silk yeah. route so that now becomes an issue the right flank like i said india prefers strategic autonomy so we have to be prepared for uh, with us he will not do the kinetic one but kinetic will be internal he will generate internal problems quad is limited. the problem is quad is limited to the western pacific now china is gaining strength you didn't do anything to strategic islands and i'm told uh, amti is saying that they are advancing to some more islands there So what do you do? The alternate to because you use the financial institutions as uh, weapons weapons of war, there is an alternate petro commons currency which is coming up, especially the rupee. Though it's gaining traction slowly, but it is coming up. Thirty-five countries, sir. Yeah. Alternate financial tracks uh, transaction modes to SWIFT. India's UPI again gaining a foothold. Thirty-five countries. Rupee card is already there, which is and the advantage of both UPI and rupee is there is no what they call the yeah if MDR or FDR there is some transaction rates 
which they charge for use of card. It's like if I am the point of sale for using the, for being able to use the card, I have to pay to Visa and yeah. to, Rupee doesn't charge. The government pays those. The loss to the banks is paid by the government. It's called merchant discount rate. Kurtzi, Naveen, merchant sir. discount. The government pays. Yeah, merchant discount rate. The government pay is paying it. Even UPI, there is no transaction rate. So the common man is not affected. It doesn't get add on. Like earlier, I had the state bank had visa card. Yes. When I used to pay my electricity bill on the visa card, there used to be an additional money that I used to pay over and above my electricity bill. It used to be shown as handling charges, which is covered under the MDR. Now I have a rupee. My card is over. I have a new rupee card. Now when I do it with rupee card, I don't pay anything additional to my uh, bill. China is also concurrently pushing and forcing countries along the BRI who have taken the investment to do its trade with Yuan. Like all the countries who are uh, owing it money, they are saying, he's saying it, you service the debt in Yuan, not in dollars. Now, declining China impacts the US and the West trade because they have created it as the supply, their main supply chain hub. So how do you manage that? West Asia, North Africa, Afpak region. This is in a deep flux. And especially immediately in our region. So what is likely to be the fallout? Mm -hmm. They will be if, as it is, Pakistan is a failing state. It has no money. Now, I keep hearing the chatter of people calling us as the third pole. Should India be happy being called as the third pole? Hmm. I, I kind of think so, sir. They, they, you become, no, Abito, you are very clear that whatever you're doing, your UPI, your rupee is parallel with, it's not going against the SWIFT because still a lot of transaction you are also doing with SWIFT and in dollar. The moment you're creating it as a third pole, then you become a competitor to the other pole. So how before we start looking ourselves and being happy that we are emerging as a third pole, we need to be very clear that what is its impact on us financially, economically, and strategically before we start embracing such a thing? Because it comes with its own geopolitical, yeah. and strategic, and geoeconomic impact. And, I mean, safety impact. Last guy who did it is six feet down under. This may be the last big point. I feel we are back to the situation after the First World War. In the First World War, the extant powers were on the decline mm -hmm. and the only power available which had all the money was the US. Mm -hmm. Today, post the Ukraine conflict now, who has the pockets the one country which has some money is declining, China. Doesn't have the trust. US still, the British accepted them. Chalo, 56, there was a lot of his, but still it was an Anglo-Saxon taking over mm -hmm. from an Anglo-Saxon. Like very clearly Anglo-Saxon axis, you can make out the five eyes, only the Anglo-Saxon countries yeah. are there. Others are not there. I mean, G7 and this and that, anyways. Yeah. No, no. Five Eyes is, Five Eyes the, is the biggest example, yes. Sir. Biggest thing, which is the US, the UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. And 
all their satellites and other bases are located in australia it's part of five eyes which monitor all the int and traffic and sigint and elint and everything they do that from there the other nato countries are not part of it yeah okay in today like after the first world war who is that power who will give you uh, uh, assist the global south in providing for the global commons what you looked at as global commons has already been used as a weapon of war true there is everybody is facing recession except for india and saudi arabia and uh, russia has the money but how it manages its procurement of things that's a different issue but at the moment these are the only two are you in a position to provide global commons to everybody no are you facing a deep recession then are you facing is the world facing a kindleberg trap has <laughs> have the americans thought about this i don't Before think so sir so. ukraine and did all these things that's where i say that the vision has been given all these people who gave them the vision are not there god bless their soul wherever they are huntington is out of the loop ralph peters is there he is out of the loop neocons are out of the loop and the one person who is there whom people don't talk to because of his age is kissinger <laughs> he was the one who gave the policy of control of oil and energy for global yeah. dominance that is kissinger's yeah. strategy carried forward by zbigniew brzezinski got up jo विजन करता थे बिकॉज बाय 2006 7 दे फेल्ट दैट दे विल अचीव व्हाट एवर दे वांट बिकॉज देयर वाज नो ओपोजिशन एट दैट टाइम दे इट वाज अ यूनिपोलर वर्ल्ड द पैक्स दे स्टॉप टॉकिंग अबाउट पैक्स अमेरिकाना एंड द पैक्स द प्रोजेक्ट फॉर द न्यू अमेरिकन सेंचुरी द मेन पर्सन वाज डिक चीनी तो वो तो गया है नहीं गॉड ब्लेस हिज सोल वेयर एवर ही इज So who is the next to give them a vision how to go forward? Andrew Marshall is not there. Joe Biden, sir. But Joe Biden, se konsa net assessment ho ke aage ka dega? That's why I said there is no plan B now. Exactly. Abhi jaise if you compare it to China, the vision was given by Sun Yat-sen. Yeah. The grand strategy was given by Tang Xiaoping. How to go about doing it? और उसको फाड़ फूड के फेंक दिया शी जिनपिंग ने नाउ ही वांट्स टू बी गुड टू शोज हु ट्रस्ट हिम सेम इज द केस विद अमेरिकन गुंडागर्दी बहुत कर दी ना व्हेन यू वर द सोल सुपर पार दे मिस द डैम बोट एट एवरी स्टेज इंस्टेड ऑफ डूइंग गुर्दागर्दी इफ दे हैड यूज डिप्लोमेसी people would still have listened because he was the capo di tutti capi ab zabardasti ghus gaye in every place you went to iraq chalo afghanistan ke chalo 911 hua so un ne sanction kar diya you went into afghanistan iraq kyon gaye syria kyon gaye libya kyon gaye arab spring kyon karaya जो तुमने उनको बोला था दे विल बी नो वेस्टवर्ड एक्सपेंशन ऑफ नेटो क्यों किया यूक्रेन राइट वेस्टवर्ड एक्सपेंशन ऑफ नेटो नहीं होना था क्यों किया तुमने तो उसी के पीछे से तो यूक्रेन हुआ सो आई वाइल दे कंटिन्यू विद देयर नॉन काइनेटिक मोड्स टू अ लास्ट एक्सटेंड बिकॉज ऑफ द वाइड रीच दैट दे हैव इट इज देयर कैपेसिटी टू गो काइनेटिक or make countries go kinetic against each other which is going to which is creating a problem today for them to be trusted they are still today one of the most powerful countries in the world biggest outreach that they have so i wish you get a new set of people who can give do a net assessment for them correctly because the when you do a swot analysis the gap between the others have reduced quite a lot 
between you and the others. So in what manner should you go about? And the state department has to start understanding that they need to uh, partner, not lead an alliance. The days of leading the alliance are over. Mm -hmm. Now it is a question of days of partnering Partner. where you compromise for the interest of the others. Okay. So I'll finish here. Kafi Lamba Chal gaya hai to explain my point of view. Nice, sir. This is an interesting point of view, guys. You can link this with so much that has happened over the space of time that we see across us. And I mean, the, the war in Iraq. It this way. I have nothing against Americans per se. Anyone who is wanting to be or is a major power will do anything that is available in his power to make sure that he continues to dominate. It is essentially of late since the uh, start of the 21st century. It is the manner in which they have gone about kinetically that has made people lose faith with them. That is the problem. Yeah, you established yeah. a financial global common and Ukraine, you made use of it as a weapon of war. That worries people. That worries me. I mean, uh, which 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 is the in most interesting thing in this entire thing, entire game is the fact that they've had issues after issues after issues in every place that they've kind of fingered into. But the realization of a change course, you know, like, dude, what's happening? Yeah? Why are we getting into getting stuck everywhere? It started from Korea, where you got stuck. It went into the whole lot of invasions that happened in the 50s in Panama and this and that in South America. Uh, went into, what do you call, uh, Vietnam. Vietnam after that. Then you went into, uh, you know, you started your Middle Eastern games where the poking had already started. You started with Afghanistan, created this entire thing, which is backfiring at you. Went into Iraq, created that entire thing, which is now backfiring at you. Went into Syria, you created that entire thing. You started a war in Yemen, initially supported, then pulled off. You're now wanting to start up something in Serbia and Kosovo, Kosovo, where you already have a war in Ukraine. And the game would be if the allies stuck together, where I'm going to take just half a minute. Turkey and Greece are fighting where France says, I will get with Turkey if there's a war. Um, you've got... Uh, Germany and Poland today talking about reparations. You've got, I mean, the list is endless. Yes. You've got the British who are, I don't know what's no, going to no, happen no. this year. You have no clue how to go about it. Yeah, uh, no, no. My point is with regards to the size of their own country, if the Scots actually get what they want and they were... This closed last time. So you basically, you know, and, and for the lack of a better word, sacrifice the entire setup that you yourself created. Right? That's why I said, no, I put that plan B in a question mark. See, when you study debt assessment, you look at long term and you create chota chota windows. The chota windows that you create every five years or if you want after 10 years is essentially for you to check what is the mid-course correction that you need to do. Because geopolitics, geostrategy, geoeconomics is not static. It's a very dynamic uh, platform. You cannot continue in that same direction. You need to have mid-course corrections and changes. But here the problem was that Post the 1990, 92, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, ये तो बिल्कुल दादागिरी हो गई थी कि भाई अब हम इतने दादागिरी से सब कुछ करेंगे कि हमारे ही domination अगले 100 साल से ऊपर होना चाहिए। Yeah, I mean, 
for the lack of a better word, uh, the rape of Russia was something known uh, between the, 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 I think, 93 to 97 or 98, 98, before the advent of Putin. I mean, the way that they ripped Russia open, it was something to be behold, actually. So, if... I would always say missed opportunity. Like the big, biggest opportunity they missed since I was based in Central Asia was. Despite initial warning, why did Putin agree that their bases could be in Central Asia? Because the five Central Asian nations refused to believe, accept Putin's diktat. Yeah. And they, they were the first ones to say, come, come here. Yeah. The biggest base was in Uzbekistan and the Uzbekistan. other one was in Kyrgyzstan. The French had a base in Dushanbe in Tajikistan. Everybody opened up expecting that they would be taught about democracy, their economies would be looked after, they would be taught about economies like in, why do they look up to India like Tajikistan? That we have had people from the finance ministry going there on deputation for three to four years, teaching them how to run a country. Because those pe- poor people didn't know how to run a country. Our department was going to go there. Even now. Even now. Okay. Yeah. Now the issue is that Americans didn't do anything. So slowly, slowly, Starting from 2001 when they came in, by the time they reached about 2004-05, they were absolutely, uh, you could say, disgusted with the Americans and the West. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and they went back, they had no choice, they went back to Putin. No, no, this is, so the, I, I'm going to call this actually the great shift which is going to take place because uh, there is see, there is a the other the reason why i worry for asia is this is the century where the asian century can come up yeah the two big fault lines first is china because as for a nation century it can't be one nation's rise it has to be the region's the rise mm. and the next is the us that today both their dreams are clashing over Asia. So Usme worry hai what next? While they have talked about redrawing the borders of the Middle East, what happens to Africa, what happens to Latin America and what happens to the balance of Asia? See, the Chinese and the US fault line runs right directly on Asia. Yeah. yeah. The game is in Asia, even now. I mean, yeah, the game is in Asia. The game is in Asia. So that's the concern. Right, sir. Let's get into some questions. It's uh, uh, we'll kind of uh, you know, take as many as we can and we'll run through them. Uh, it's a out of subject question, but I think uh, Jai Bharat Jai Punjab Sahib is hell bent of asking it. Uh, thank you for your contribution. Why not Jai Bharat but Jai Hind? It's a Persian word. I am always a Bharatiya. I always love the word Bharat. So you have a point. Forge may we have always said Jehin, so it comes naturally having served in uniform for over 40 years. But yes, like in one of my talks earlier, I have said that I don't like the word India, nor do I like the word Hindustan. We are Bharat, simple and straight. And I also don't subscribe to the word Hindutva. I subscribe to the word Bharatiyata. That is because Hindutva word. has the tone of a Western given name. Yeah, it's Hindutva. not ours. It's not ours. We are Bharatiyas. And you read your Rig Veda. People only talk of Ramayana and Mahabharata. The first great war which was fought and from where? From India, the tribes and people have migrated towards Europe. Is thus Rajanya. And it went on for almost decades. It's not just a single war. Okay. A lot of people talk of it as only as King Sudas. No, Sudas ke pehle bhi ladai hui thi. Sudas ke baad bhi descendants lade hai. And the battlefield has shifted from Yamuna towards the Indus and to Afghanistan. 
इफ यू प्लीज द लास्ट बैटल क्या विसार गिरिजा वी से ऐसी कुछ नाम है वॉज फॉट इन अफगानिस्तान and then from their people those tribes who were defeated they migrated into persia armenia greece to croatia serbia europe all these places those people have migrated and settled so it was not a migration inside it was a migration outside outward and the bharatpuru from where we derive the name bharat they were victorious and that is how India got the name as Bharat. So I am Bharat. We are Bharat. <laughs> Get back to USA, sir. Uh, thanks, Naveen, for your contribution, General Sir. Uh, in the context of USA grand strategy, how do you see the rise of China to an extent where it's seen as a competitor? Has there been a grand miscalculation? <laughs> a good question navin the miscalculation had been that they thought that if people become uh, wealthy they can have a lot of money then democracy will automatically fall china has proven them wrong it doesn't happen that way uh, to be able to understand the biggest problem of china is they have not understood the culture and the thought how people think Asia, all asians don't think alike and even china or think in the manner in which they thought yeah uh, they made them the uh, i mean how sorry to interrupt you sir this hyphenation business that the us has kind of brought up with indo park af park yeah indo china i mean <laughs> if that be the case like indo china why do you call it the south china sea we should call it the indo china sea it's <laughs> so you see, that is where the biggest miscalculation has yeah. been. Yeah. Now they are trying to set it right. You see, they didn't realize they have funded the infrastructure development of China for ten years through the nineties. They funded the infrastructure development of China to be able to convert it into the global supply chain hub. Then, through the uh, first decade. of the 21st century they became the global supply chain hub okay. now suddenly you realize that whatever you had thought is not happening now you are worried you didn't now you don't have that kind of money if we have to become a global supply chain hub or even a major hub look at the kind of investment that at the moment is going on and you still need more oh tan tan more You need ports. You need energy. You need roads. You need rails. That is why you find this government doing the dedicated freight corridors and your Sagar Mala projects and everything. It is only once the infrastructure base has been given to somebody that people will start coming in. Otherwise, what will happen? जो अभी हो रहा है, people either go towards the Maharashtra coastline or go to the Gujarat coastline or come to some come to the Chennai coastline. or to hyderabad coast line your telangana uh, telang andhra coast line the reason being you need ports na saman kaise nikaloge if you want to be a supply chain hub correct but if the sagar mala comes in through then all regions of your country start developing not just a few even inside you come into mp you come into bihar all these will have connectivity to the nearest port and everything and that is what is the grid that is required yeah. you can't have we have so many states and union territories you can't have diversified development that we yeah that is where the, like china is only the eastern seaboard or kuch hai nahi so Yes. Thank you, Naveen. Once again, uh, General Sir, we are still reading from the after effects of Pax Americana. Do you think Pax Americana will cause a similar havoc for generations to come? Naveen Babu, Pax Americana. So, when did it get to you? Who sang Elvis Presley's songs? We were young, but we were the ones who listened to classical and semi-classical. 
वो तो कब के खत्म हो गए लोगों के कौन सुनता है यार रैप सॉन्ग्स यू लुक एट योर द बिगेस्ट यू कुड से टच स्टोन इज योर मूवीज इट इंडिकेट्स वे योर गोइंग look at the songs in your films coca cola sir you know look at the songs in your films you gone into rap songs and various other songs which have no meaning where is the melody which used to be there earlier which was your culture it's not there pax britannica was in the thinking yeah the colonial mindset wherein you questioned your culture you questioned your history That is, but Pax Americana तो हो गया पूरा यार. They say Coca-Cola was a big part of it to send it across yeah. the world. It's an interesting question, sir. Sir, government has announced uh, funds to research green hydrogen can be reduce natural gas by using biomass produced food and cat or produced from food and cattle waste. This will help. I'm not sure what that means. Uncle Sam, your view? Yeah, Raghu. Good. The government has provided, I think, some nineteen thousand crores. That's the first step. But like I said in my last talk, green energy, hydrogen is expensive. Hydrogen fuel cells are not cheap. Primarily because current technology uses platinum plates. So there are research work going on to bring in various grades of steel inside to reduce the yeah. cost. I hope. this funding does that biomass invest of course yeah methane in nepos is already you get fine. methane so you can make it into methanol and blend it with your fuel you don't need to use only sugarcane na to get ethanol methane nikal ke aata hai methanol karke bhi kar sakte ho so there are various ways to do it you can use biomass like i remember i had gone to bark long ago about 2000 13 and there they were showing a lot of projects there was one person who came from a area in maharashtra they were part that panchayat which was there had about 5 6 villages so he started work with them there on gobar gas and biomass and today he says and that is in 2013 those villages don't are not part they don't need the electricity grid the he has taught them to generate electricity from the gobar gas and the biomass and the uh, vegetable waste and they generate their own electricity for the village yeah or wo jitna wo la ke dete hain he had set out a rate for them x amount of money he will give it's a central place because the villagers won't be able to do it set up a central place and he gives them remuneration in kind they don't want money they said they want it in kind hmm doodh mil jata hai ya khane ke liye jo kuch bhi hai they have set the rate the panchayat sets the rate and uske mutabik la ke wo de dete hain sara kuch and so certain amount of gobar he still uses for whatever jo lipai wagera ghar ke bahar karne ke liye because that helps in keeping away the insects rest he says is not only electricity they are generating gas piped gas home yeah so you have a lot there's a lot of workable patents regime is another super weapon controlling capital and intellect makes patent a tool for maintenance of very property. true that's what i said ensure acad- academic excellence you control the patents absolutely there's no question sir i mean uh, the 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 entire uh, setup of containing uh, sorry not creating these patents and you know uh, i mean we saw the war happening during the vaccine this thing india and south africa see, kept saying yeah, just remember right nice. during my young days yeah us had started but number 1 on the list was always oxford or cambridge yeah yeah by the 80s the oxford and cambridge had fallen by the wayside and the ivy league had started what do you think is an ivy league they've re- 
no, no, they have roped in whatever the best minds are there and put them in those colleges. And That's put it. them on a nice gravy train so that they speak like a parrot of Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the interesting thing about uh, this entire game is, of course, China, sir. And, and and I mean everybody everybody is focused towards China. Not currently, of course. Russia is I mean some of the that predomination of the threat from the pivot land, as you say, has kind of kept the West busy quite a bit. Now see the moment it's a smoke screen. Hmm. The moment I start talking China, 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 nobody thinks about existing uh, Super Parker global dominance kaise aaya aur wo kya karega to continue with it. <laughs> Interesting, no? How do you divert attention? Information warfare. Information warfare. That's This is interesting and you and I were talking about this uh, offline sir. Idea of power and bide your time. Yes, yes, yes. India has to. That's why I question certain people, certain experts who gloat and said India has become a third pole. Shantra. Hide your powers and bide your time. India I mean, is... Some people say yeah, India ka century yoga. World Bank also says then they will do. See, I worry when this happens because when those people do studies, the studies will tell what are your strengths, but they hide what strategy the global superpower will use to break those strengths. Yeah. Be very careful of that. Never gloat. Just say you're a global superpower. Kaya, and still, I would state now, if you uh, find we have the fifth largest economy, but what is your average uh, salary when you come out to? Average Indian, $2,000, $3,000 versus if you look at Europe, it's about $50,000, $60,000. So fifth largest economy is good, but for my population, I need to be so dominant. I may not get $50,000, $60,000. Maybe I'll be happy if I have all my people are able to earn equivalent of $15,000 at today's rate. You know, so you are strong, but you need to be stronger. There's an interesting comment. Every everyone in Indian government knows your politics. We only like to play dumb and weak as it's a long-term strategy. So it's better. Let them think we are dumb, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind. Let them think we are dumb. It's not just geopolitics. Yeah. It's geopolitics, geostrategy, and most importantly, today in a connected world is geoeconomics. Geoeconomics. Geoeconomics plays a very major role today. May not have earlier, but today, yes, because we are an interconnected, globalized world. People may want to go independent, but you can't. You can't survive on that. Market yeah. chahiye, resources chahiye, to build anything inside. Tumko resources bahar se chahiye, aur bahar bechne ke liye market chahiye. Internal consumption is still okay, but Production is impossible. No, internal consumption to is there. Chalo, 60%. What do you do with the balance 40%? Yeah. I mean, you have to really reset your economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with every recession, US prints more notes. In this process, uh, it exports inflation to other countries using, using dollar as a reserve currency. Do you think the deep state has realized its endless printing mess? I hope it has realized... Oh, no, they haven't, sir. Because Not now that the alternate numbers. economy, uh, alternate uh, currencies have started. You really think see, so, sir, with 1.7 trillion more going into the coffers? Yeah, see, why is uh, US so scared of your UPI? I don't need to carry any card. I don't need to carry any currency. I just need my smartphone and the money is there to you. I don't need to buy dollars now. Even if I'm going to pay you in dollars, I don't need to buy and carry dollars with me. 
<laughs> I don't need to have a foreign currency account in your country. Travelers checks. Remember that. I don't need no, no travelers checks. I don't need anything. Now that starts worrying people. Yeah. And now that there are so many, almost thirty-five countries keen to open Vastro account in your country to do trade in rupees. that should start worrying and that is where i say that we should also look at the challenges that we will face for such a line and quietly isko dindora nahi peetna i'm sure the decision makers are looking at it isko dindora nahi peetna hai kisi press mein nahi nikalna hai kahin kuch nahi karna hai chup chaap se karke rahe Kalyan says, "So long as India is in, dependent on FDIs from the West and money being transferred via the SWIFT channel, can India afford to antagonize international monetary regime?" Exactly That's what I think. You're slowly, slowly doing it. You don't want to. SWIFT is still being used by us. It is a step that you're taking. UPI. The biggest worry for the West will be when we get into EUP. <laughs> that would be the biggest currency because it is not a cryptocurrency it is backed by your reserve bank that by a country not like cryptocurrency ki in the air what is it equivalent to the eup has an equivalence value gold yeah and it is supported by the reserve bank of a country absolutely so things won't change overnight these things don't change like I said we are in the situation like at the end of the First World War, 2019. When did the Americans finally? When did the UN come and when did the financial institutions and everything come for the global commons? 1945, 1948, and the Americans got full control of everything in 1956. कहाँ 1919 और कहाँ 1948? समय लगता है ये सब को set up होने में. the reason being like they say it doesn't take much time to destroy but it takes a lot of time to build something yeah so if you want to shift from one system to the other system you got to build it up from a foundation yeah. that's why i say quietly dono side se karna hai nahi to building bante bante wo tod tod dega the get this you're telling venki sir that is what you i'm saying you got to be very careful of how you yeah. go forward remember that the, the americans have spent 100 years building what they built and they are damn proud of it so of course yeah. they are proud of it yeah 1919 and now we are in 19 uh, 2022 sir two parts so uh, just bear with me i think uh, uh, they will start creating problems in india when we be close to creating alternative bricks financial system uh, we will be hit hard and we need to be ready as a democracy they will use pakistan fully against you just look at the recent uh, jay shankar interview and they especially made a point of war between india and pakistan yeah i agree with you we have to be careful that's why we are moving step by step by step not fully open and uh, internal challenges if you go back to my uh, presentation i had done with him on rising india and the challenges that we face i have always called clubbed all of these western powers under inimical powers who wants uh, another rising power if that rising power is part of their uh, coterie they are happy if you are going to be strategic autonomy he is not going to be happy so you will face challenges this is an interesting thing and we were discussing this let's just take a minute to discuss that sir uh, we will go on to another 10 minutes to 1 hour and 30 minutes and then we'll come to a close i want you to take 2 minutes to explain to the audience what you meant by the actual meaning of vishwa guru vishwa guru is jab sansar mein problem hota hai to wo aapke paas daude aata hai ki iska samadhan kya hai and the first indicator has been ukraine war both putin and zelensky has come to you yeah 
after zelensky was sent to us to be given a mouthful of what all he was saying and doing and the, if today like a lot of experts talk about it you can't predict how the war goes but if today something happens which leaves a fractured ukraine on the peace table whom do you think both sides will agree to negotiate and be there along the so called uh, ceasefire line india simple you also so, mentioned yeah. something about an outward projection of threat when you call yourself and say that your the world is one family i don't have any threat against anybody i am not threatening anybody okay that also vasudeva kutumbakam please sir vasudeva kutumbakam you are all my family so i am i am not going to harm short you are saying if you accept that i am the patriarch of your the family <laughs> see that's but that's it is not it is one thing to say it and it is the other thing for being acceptable look at the number of countries who accept you as that yeah that you yeah. are their friend global south constitutes a large chunk of the countries and they look on you as a friend who has no ulterior motive when he comes to help them See, that is the concept of Vishnu Guru and Vas Vasudhai Vakutumbaka. That I would That's like awesome. everyone to grow. I have no ulterior motive when I am coming to help you. So you had good relations with Ukraine. You had good relations with Russia. That's why you refused to take the sides. It can't be one against the other. Yeah. And because of that, today both sides. Please remember. when our people were being pulled out did they have a ceasefire when our both sides came? both sides and all they were told that in the bus put the flag of india nobody will say anything to you you went out yeah wala baat hai pakistani bhi andar baithe the that's okay but it happened that was not the first instant the biggest first instant which took place was in the battle of yemen when you were wanting a cease fire for 7 days both sides agree at the port of yemen aden both sides agreed and they said that every day we will have a cease fire for 2 hours jal vk singh then the uh, minister of state for foreign affairs was sitting there and every day 2 ghante ka wo cease fire hota tha we brought out all our people and about 2 3000 more of foreigners also yeah, yeah. under that so that is the iranians houthis the saudis the uae everybody agreed for 2 2 ghante ka cease fire ki india nikalna chahta hai that indicates your acceptability to warring sides yeah. also the soft image that you keep putting it on no i won't call it soft it is essentially just, yeah it's it's it is essentially able... that you don't come with any ulterior motive when you're doing yeah 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 that's what i think yeah you're clean aap kehte ho main ye karne aa raha hu to ye karke aap ja rahe ho okay your planes were not shorted your ships were not shorted nothing happened and you were bringing them through that same pirate area even the somali pirates and others didn't attack your ships they made no attempt to come anywhere near your ships so that's the interesting part sir i mean uh, that is the growing image of india yeah. today acceptability of india again i'll use your word acceptability pehle nahi hota tha you were looked down upon today there is a level of acceptability that has come Hmm. amongst the nations that yes we there is somebody whom we can turn to in in our hour of need and that is how the uh, sobrike comes as vishwa guru but i would prefer to keep it low key we should not state it let the others state it hum kyon bole
No, no, that's very interesting because, I mean, uh, Janus had discussed this, discussed this with me yesterday when we were planning the show, and it stuck with me. And I said, okay, let's think about it a little more. When you're talking about a Vishwa Guru, you're not really saying anything. You're just saying, listen, and Vasudev Kutumbakam. It's a very subtle message in diplomacy, which has actually been put across. If you look at it, so if you're actually able to pull it off, it's going to be the best because it's not a hegemonic power. It's an acceptance See, power, which is what is hidden in this is our ancient. If you read your ancient text and scriptures, is our concept of a chakravarti. Chakravarti was done was somebody who was become very that, powerful. <laughs> He used to do an Ashwamegh Yagya. Yeah. This is the wrong thing that we have read in the past that he used to sacrifice the horse. The horse was not sacrificed. In whichever direction you wanted to expand your kingdom, those three directions, three horses were sent, followed by your three portions of your army behind them. Whichever kingdoms it went into, if they accepted it, they came with gifts to the commander-in-chief of that direction that we accept his suzerainty over us and we will give X amount of money as indemnity every year, annual tribute. If you didn't accept it, you held the horse and you fought. If you won, you stayed independent. If you lost, you went under his suzerainty. What did it imply? It was not the Chinese concept of kowtow. Sorry. It was that, okay, now we will not fight amongst each other. I will not fight with you all. You will also not fight against one another. I will ensure peace, stability and your economic growth. Jo karna hai karo. Itna merko tum annual tribute de teo to maintain the forces so that if any one country attacks you, I will be there with the complete force to support you. Anyone from outside, any other kingdom attacking you. So the Chakravarti was looking after everybody as Vasudaiva Kutumbaka. That you we are all part of one family. That was the concept of our Chakravarti. That is gone. Sir, uh, let's bring this talk to an end. I think we've covered a very large scope of ground. Guys, I think this has been a very, very interesting discussion. Of course, there's been a huge conversation amongst you guys about what all you've been saying, sir. Trust me, everybody's been talking about each thing. They've been putting up their views about the stuff that we've been talking about. Uh, so it's 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 interesting that we've been able to build a conversation with the people that are watching, yeah, watching here and kind to... of... What I want people to know is don't just keep looking at China as a threat. If you are rising handsome, the extent power will also be a threat to you. Everybody will. He will not like to cede space to you. Yeah. So don't just keep looking at China. They are bigger threats. Other threats also your way. Absolutely. See, there is there's going to be a whole lot. And today the entire battle is going to be fought in my favorite word, narratives. I mean, this is something I think uh, I'm going to live my life by. Yes, because look at the kind of narratives against you have started coming in New York Times, Washington yeah, Post, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wall Street Bloomberg Journal. Bloomberg just wrote such a big Bloomberg. piece about demonetization and this and that. Yeah. So this is going to happen. And I think, you know, the best, best these better are the, part. These are the challenges you are going to face. And you need to strategize how to overcome them. Yes. Absolutely. And the better part about it is that today we are talking about these challenges before they actually come to us. Yes. Before they become mountains that we feel we're not able to cross. We, we know about them. We talk about them. We're talking about them in a nice little night session that we've had today. We talk about them on Dev Talks, I think, every second day with regards to any particular subject that happens because it's all a battle of narratives. You sell more if your narrative is good. You sell less if your narrative is bad. Simple as that. Everyone's a shopkeeper. Everyone's out to sell his stuff. And as the general actually brought out, it's the Americans who want to control the stuff itself. <laughs> the stuff being the black gold, which is oil. Now we know, and I'm going to just take 30 seconds sir, to summarize what you said. Now we know why there are wars 
in places that there are walls. You think something, sir? See, I I have nothing against either the Americans or the Chinese. This is the line of their strategy that they have decided that the country is going to take. And to a large extent, till the 80s and 90s, the Americans have been very successful. And till about COVID happened, the Chinese were relatively successful. Now it is unraveling. And uh, Americans still have the power with them. And I do hope they have a plan B instead of going kinetic because the, like our Prime Minister said, this is not the Era time to fight. This is not the time to go to war. So That tells you another thing. Leave alone the Prime Minister. A statement that came out of India. Yeah. I mean, that thing has been quoted and quoted and quoted in every bloody place. Everywhere. I mean, Putin Everywhere. throws it back at the West, the West throws it back at the Putin. Back at Putin. Putin. No, the <laughs> issue <laughs> is issue is when he states war, yeah. we think it is clash of arms. No. War means a lot of things. Yeah. Which I hope to people all over and the extend powers and others have all understood that look because it goes back to what our prime minister had made the statement long ago how much six seven years ago in uh, no five years ago i think in the shangri-la dialogue conference sagar sagar security mm-hmm. and growth for all in the region you may grow but people along don't grow, you will not benefit. That's the difference between India and China. Bottom line. <laughs> See, Thanks, sir. This was... I'll, I'll give you a small anecdote on to cover this part. Ah, sure, sure. There was a farmer who would grow pineapples. Okay. Some of his pineapples used to be very big. Some were smaller. Okay. While he would sell off all the small ones, I'm saying as compared to the other farm, the smaller ones were similar in size. The bigger ones were big. While he would sell off all the smaller ones, he never sold off all the big ones. But he never told his children why he was doing it in that manner. When the other farms also started following suit, they also started growing big ones. But they used to sell off all their big ones. When this patriarch died, The children started following what the others were doing, selling off all their big ones. Over a period of time, everybody in that area had only small, small uh, uh, pineapples. So when they started querying, they finally asked the old matriarch. She said whatever was balanced, which he didn't sell, he would use that as seeds and he used to distribute it to his neighbors so that everyone benefited and the big ones were also there and people will come to that place to buy because the big ones are also there and others who couldn't afford the bigger ones would buy the smaller ones but the footfalls came in their market area. Now that you are selling off all of that, now you don't have the seeds for the bigger ones. So you have only smaller ones. So your footfalls are falling. <laughs> Security and growth for all in the region. All in the region. So if you have something, some portion of it, do share to let the others also grow. 
That's the that will be the footfalls for trade in the region in geo-economic world. The trade in the region will grow. You know, the best they will benefit. You will benefit. That's the only way you can benefit. I would say that. Yeah. That is how you benefit. Singular benefit will never work. You have to have a combined this thing. So it is a. I mean, like we say in India, it's all of nation approach. It can't yes. be just one aspect of it doing it. It has to be everyone all the time. Otherwise, you will be bickering against each other and fighting against each other yeah, and easily be permitted yeah. to fight against each other. Sir, thank you so much. This has been a brilliant talk. I think we've we've left a lot of food for thought for a lot of people to think as to and go back to history and refer a little bit. And I, guys, one one thing I'd like to say, and sir, you know, my regards to you about this that we've discussed so many topics. Now we've always talked about history, which is my favorite thing in terms of discussing geopolitics of the day. A lot of us and a lot of people try and put across geopolitics with what is happening today, right? Remember this: without an angle of history, geopolitics is nothing. You cannot understand it, and that's something which I think Sir brings out very, very brilliantly. And at, I mean, at my level, I'd like to always maintain the connection with history at on my channel to kind of put the point across with a certain game which flows through. Otherwise, it's just a statement, and that does, doesn't really make sense. So, as I said, thank you so much. It's always an informative session, learning experience. I think a lot of people are saying great presentation and you know super analysis from General Sir. Whole lot of things which are coming across here. But my regards to you in terms of collating this kind of data because this is not something that you can refer to in one one paper and kind of get it through. It's it's a whole lot of you know. Uh, connected kind of affair which needs to be put across and it's a lot of uh, research that goes into something like this. Thank you so much as usual sir and catch you next thank time. You, thank you and thank you for giving me the platform to express my views as we call it in Forge, passing it on so that the next generation can learn something. Absolutely sir. Thank Jai you. Jai Bharat. Jai Bharat.